Capitano, another week, another game, and it's a big one. How do you think it's going to go? Um, hopefully, we can um, we can all pull together today. We ain't got we've got sort of got a makeshift team. A couple of people pulled out of injuries and uh, other commitments, but I feel like we, the level we got on the pitch, I feel like we could we could get it done. It was a, a tough game in the quarterfinals. You managed to scrape through on penalties. Uh, how do you think today's going to go? I hope about penalties again. To be fair, we we got good luck in penalties, but no, uh, we we know this side. We know this side quite well. We played against them over the years, getting promoted and staying in the same leagues and stuff. So, yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can uh, um, press quite high on the pitch, cause a few mistakes at the back, and get early goals. Well, you're a division above them, favourites on paper. Would you agree with that? No. No, there's no favourites. There's no favourites. We know we know what these lot bring. Uh, in the biggest game of of um, us competing together, they beat us. So we know exactly what it is. So yeah, there's no there's no favourites on this on this day. You mentioned the biggest game you've competed against each other. That Prem Cup final from a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. Are you still feeling the wounds of that defeat? Trust me, I'm still feeling the wounds of that defeat, bro. Trust me, I am. That was that was a massive game. There was a, a big big crowd for that game as well, and um, and they turned us over. So. Um, every time we play them, we, we, we want to owe them. We want to owe them big time. Well, there's no bigger occasion than the Roger Jones Challenge Cup. Uh, who are you looking towards to make a difference today? All of us. Yeah, there's no individuals today. Um, if, we can, um, if we can pull together, we win the game. But that, that, that's if we pull together. That's what we need to do to win the game. Um, there's no stand-up players for us. We're, we're a team, we're, we're all as one. So hopefully we can test them early, get the early goal and see how they, see how they cope under a bit of pressure. A lot of experience on your side. Uh, a team, like you said, you know a bit about. Have you made any adjustments coming into this game specifically? Um, I think if we had everyone fit and available, we could have adjusted things. But with 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 um, with only two, three subs and uh, uh, some players that ain't really played for a little while, yeah, I think I think it's going to be a tough one. I think it's going to be a tough one to adjust to the the game plan that the manager wants. But I think. Like I said, we I think we can get it done on the pitch today. We this is the biggest game of the season for us, so and we know what waits ahead. It's either Highgate ones or or Gower, so we, that's we, we 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 don't focus on that too much now. But that's what we won in the final, so we're gonna have to turn these lot over today. Luke, another week, another semi-final. How do you think it's gonna go? Fingers crossed, hopefully better than uh, last week. Uh, we narrowly lost out to 2-1 to Comi, but yeah, hopefully this week a lot better. Uh, we've got a good squad again this week, fantastic facilities here uh, with Highgate. And um, yeah, fingers crossed we'll be uh, speaking after the game with a win, but who knows. You've been flying this competition, 12 goals in your last two games. Uh, are you expecting a free-flowing game today? I hope so. I mean, we always have the debate about 3G and 4G and whether we're better on that or grass. Uh, Personally, I think we, we perform a little bit better on grass. Um, we've got Midge in the front line, Ellis, um, Charlie behind that. Um, and yeah, we've got plenty of goals in, in our lockup. But uh, yeah, we'll see today whether those boys are firing up. They've been ready, they've been here since half nine. So yeah, fingers crossed we can get another uh, few behind us. You're coming up against Hagia Abram Reserves. They had a, a tough quarter final going through on penalties. <coughs> are they a team you know a lot about? Well, we played them in the final uh, two years ago, I think it was now. I don't know how many players are the same. There are a few that I can recognise, but um, we don't know too much about them. I know they're in the division above us, uh, which is always a great test for us guys as a club. Um, and they're about midway through their, their um, league, about mid-table. So, yeah, we, we fancy ourselves. So, fingers crossed, we can uh, show everyone what we're made of and beat a team in the division higher. We had a, a lovely turnaround uh, in the quarterfinal, 5-2 after coming in 2-2 at half-time. A lot of grit and resilience on your side. Do you think last week's setback is going to affect the mentality at all? No, not at all. We're, we're, we're a team that are always uh, yeah, very resilient. We always like to reflect on how well we've done. Um, last week, yeah, as we said, didn't go to plan, but that doesn't mean anything for us. We just go again. It's a semi-final. We just had a really good chat uh, in the change room, so fingers crossed. We just wipe that behind us now, um, and we go again this week, and fingers crossed we get a win. OK, uh, finally, are there any, any changes coming into this game? Uh, so Matt Rolls is on a school trip, uh, he's a teacher, he's not here. Um, Kieran Kathleen here at centre-back, he's got a concussion and was hospitalised last night, which wasn't great. Um, and we're missing um, someone else there, I can't remember who, Harry Burt at right back, who's a really mature head to have. But we've got a squad of 26 players, players that came out, have come straight back in with players of equal quality. So fingers crossed, yeah, we, we, uh, we those players are feeling really confident coming inside and are going to help us out despite the absences.
A very warm welcome to the St Lucius playing fields. This is the Roger Jones Challenge Cup semi-final tie between Highgate Albion Seconds and Enfield United. Highgate Albion Seconds are managed by Michael Slowey. They line up with John T. Purdom in goal, a back four of Ryan Clark, Shane McNamara, Rhys White and Aaron Meller. In midfield, Luke Fitzgerald, John McNamara and Daniel Glord, Jordan Palmer, Samuels and Paul Reid, supporting the captain, Lee Scott, in attack. On the bench, V. John Santang, Alfie Francis, Morgan Peters and and Simon Testamarium. They will be playing in the navy blue shirts. Enfield United are managed by Luke Caldry. They line up with Nathan Lewis in goal. Danny Warren, Max Harrowell, Jack Christodoulou and Lewis Warren are the back four. Joe Clayton in midfield with Charlie Jeffery. And then it's Lawrence Connolly, Ellis Christodoulou, Michael Mignot and Gavin Sudell in attack. On the bench, Paolo Montella, Toby Aziz, Callum Bird, Mark Sarfo and Liam Gilligan. They will be playing in the red shirts. The Roger Jones Senior Challenge Cup is sponsored by One Step MOT Centre. Almost three decades of automotive experience. Quote Barnet 20, that's Barnet 20, for 20% off of a full service. For more information, follow One Stop MOT Centre on Instagram. Today's referee is Fabian Robertson, assisted by Andreas Anastasio and Ronnie McGibbon. It's a throw in. Launched long by Highgate Albion. It's bobbling around. Here comes Jack Christodoulou to head it back out again. That's a very long throw. Dealt with well. There's plenty of players from both sides populating that penalty area. Okay, Albion trying to get the shot in. It's blocked. There's a shout there of a penalty. I think he might have got more of the ball than the man and suddenly Enfield United breaking away. Jeffrey to Connolly. Lovely ball out wide. This is Michael Mignot. Real good chance this. Pulls it across the goalkeeper and across the face of goal. It's only just wide of John T. Purdom's left-hand post. This was the penalty shout. I think there was more ball than the player. And then an excellent breakaway by Enfield United. And the ball to the left-hand side. Their top scorer, Michael Mignot, scored five in the last round against Torfik. That was nearly his seventh goal in this competition. Goal kick taken by Purdom. Headed up in the air by Sudell, and he wins it again. He's done well there, Sudell. Opens up, and this time the shot hits the post from Michael Mignot. Big chance that. Certainly Enfield United have had the better. Got some defending to do here. And they defend it well from the long throw. Now again to Meller, who wanted too much time. Towels are up at the moment as the ball is played forward by Ellis. Uh, Christodoulou. Come back by Paul Reid. Meller. In the thick of the battle. And wins a free kick. Free kick that we taken by Rhys White. Right footed. And back across goal. And the header drops just wide from Jordan Palmer Samuels. Well, he is also in good form in this competition, Jordan Palmer Samuels. Four goals in the competition so far, a brace in round five. And he very nearly opened the scoring there. That header just dropping wide. First header was won well by Luke Fitzgerald. Second header for Palmer Samuels drops just wide. Okay, Albion clear their lines. Only as far as Jeffrey looks up and plays a long ball forward. Headed away again. Header from Joe Clayton. Paul Reid. In the options and then decides to go towards the right hand side and under cuts it and Lawrence Connolly quickly plays it forward. Mignot is the danger down the left hand side, tries to get the cross in. It's turned behind for a corner kick by Ryan Clark. That corner is floated high towards the back post, headed back across again by Max Harrowell and eventually cleared away by Highgate Albion. It's returned back forward again by Ward. And then the shot was wide. Right, Ellis Christodoulou. Ryan Clark with a throw. In towards the edge of the penalty area. 
It's a dipping shot, which flies just over the top of Nathan Lewis's crossbar. Jack Christodoulik. Max Harrowell. This is a rerun of the BSFL Premier Cup final from a couple of years back, which Enfield United won. A raw memory for Highgate Albion as they look to revenge that today. Harrowell. Harrowell again. This is Enfield United's fifth game in this competition and the fifth time they've played away from home. And they're on the attack down the left-hand side. Back to get a challenge in was Clark. That's a curling effort. It's both high and wide. And the ball out from the back. Okay, Albion. That was a foul. Which Ryan, uh, Reese White rather will take free kick and a header, which drops just wide. Well, it was a dangerous ball in. And it was a clean header, but off target. Clark. Reese White plays it forward towards the left hand side, twisting and turning. Jordan Palmer Samuels, two to beat. In the end, it was good defending by Danny Warren at the expense of a corner. That corner is knocked in deep. Glanced away, it was good defending at the back by Enfield United who do look a threat on the counter-attack and that's a good ball through the middle to Chris Dudulu. Out quickly was Jonty Purdom to clear. One back though by Connolly who's on the rampage down the left-hand side and the referee would like a word with Ryan Clark for that challenge and it's a yellow card for Clark and a free kick for Enfield United. Whipped head, headed away from underneath the crossbar. Second header from Fitzgerald. Eventually the clearance is completed. He's got to be careful here. Lewis Warren is the last man. Leaves it to his goalkeeper. Nathan Lewis takes care of things. He'll come down for Harrowell and that will go out for a goal kick. Very evenly matched sides, still seeking a first goal. That's a long ball that will be seen out. Well, I thought it would, was, but uh, Shane McNamara ended up bringing it away. Jeffrey, Christodoulou, it's Ellis Christodoulou. Inside the penalty area, it's a curling effort. Just beyond the back post. Had the better chances, Enfield United. Hitting the post along the way. They've only got four defeats under their belt this season. In 23 competitive games. It's been a good season for them. Their second semi-final in successive weekends. Lost last week to Komi Kabir in the Intermediate Cup semi-final 2-1. Looking for more glory today. The referee's having a long chat with Aaron Miller. Free kick. Plays forward by Sudell, and he went for goal. He had to be on his toes there, John T. Purdom. Very nearly caught out. Max Harrowell. Coming out from the back for Enfield United. And there goes the half-time whistle. Not a goal in sight. Plenty of chances, in particularly for Enfield United to hit the post through Michael Mignot, but nil-nil at half-time. We're looking inside, there's not an option. Our heads are down, we're not losing the fucking game. It's been our worst performance for a while. We have to raise it, boys. We're walking like we're losing this game already. They've not had a clear chance, nor have we. We've done nothing, we've not even made two passes. I don't care if it goes inside to Mac and he chips it down the channel. We ain't even doing that, boys. 
It's not even going inside to the players. You've got to want it in there, boys, and just chip it. Yeah, but do you know what I think it is? In all honesty, including myself, it's waiting for someone else to go do it instead of saying, I'm on it. There you go, that's the honesty. That's what I'm saying. No one says, I'm on it straight away, and then I'm going to wait for Daniel to go. No one says, I'm doing the same thing. But I'm spending 45 minutes. I'm spending 45 minutes calling players on their numbers. I shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, I no, shouldn't I have to do man, that. Know we know your players, boys. But boys, another thing as well, yeah, and, and they just pointed out to me, the two centre-offs, their strike is coming deep to drop the ball. So yeah. we have to either pick him up or let him pick it and then all, everyone drop back together. But listen, if one of them come in, they've got runners upon runners and they're going to leave Shane or Reese exposed. I'm changing yeah, the formation, yeah. And listen, it's a semi-final. We've got, again, got a few people down watching it. Just fucking give it your all, all right? We're, we're, we're one step away from technically becoming one of the top two sides in the BSFL. It's not a bad feat to have. It's nil-nil, plenty to play for, and it goes for extra time. That last right, 10, goes we started playing. That, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. we're playing better out playing the, the back. And I think that well, last number 10, 10 we started playing around. It was good. Number 10, Triggs, I think his name is, will not follow you. So I know Midge, you went central and then right. Whoever it is out there, coming at half space between Lou and the left wing, or right wing for them, sorry, and you'll have loads of space, loads of space. Get higher as well, Al. And like yeah, brilliant keeper, defensively to get higher. You said with the shots of the keeper, do it because it will make him question himself and then the ball in behind will be easier because he'll be further on his line and we'll get more joy through that. Remember, Stan, it will yeah. just make take, him take a bit off. Himself. Take a bit off it now. Both, both centre backs, the area is like, like the keeper may be high, but if he's if you're wide, if you put the balls wide, the area to go into there is going to make the defenders think. Every ball over the top is going to make him think. That's the area where you go to where you're going to meet, low, even the striker coming across. Don't put it central, just put it wide. That's the area. Oh boys, let's have it. I'm changing the formation, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're changing the formation. We're going to a three at the back. Ryan, wing back. Aaron, left wing back. Triggs and Jordan up front. Their, their full backs ain't doing much, but ours, ours is one strike ain't getting enough of the ball. Yeah? Yeah. Boys, we've got to raise it. All of us, we look like we've lost. We're, it's nil nil, boys. It is. I don't know how they're getting that final pass in. Because the three on three in the middle is we're all on our man. When one of them runs out and we follow him out and then go in that yeah, hole yeah, into yeah, the striker, yeah. when the striker turns, up. Yeah, stay in the he's got a chance to play. Yeah. So boys, can we wait, liven up? We look boys, like we're we look, losing. Yeah, we look a bit lethargic. The game is fucking like nil, nil, boys. Mick not. Jeffrey. To get the ball forward quickly, Ellis, uh, quickly, Ellis Christodoulou has played it out wide to Sadell. Sadell trying to take on the defender. Can he get the shot in? Well, he can, but he couldn't quite wrap his left foot around it and ended up putting it wide. Nathan Lewis kicks long. Good strong header away by Reese White. Parker, uh, Palmer Samuels. Ball out wide to Testa Mariam. And then the ball in. Didn't have a take it. Long throw. Mr. Dulu. It's dangerous. It's bobbling around. Partially cleared. Not fully cleared. And then another curling effort. Well, that had bend on it from Charlie Jeffrey. And it wasn't very far away. Still this game seeks its first goal. And that first goal might just be crucial Jeffrey ball over the top goalkeepers come out and close the angle but Mignot has got the loose ball not the kindest of angles gets the cross in it's turned up in the air by Clark and eventually cleared away only as far as Clayton he quickly slams it back in but it's deep and over the crossbar Long ball forward taken well by Palmer Samuel out wide and him was Testa Merriam. His cross cleared away eventually by Christodoulou. Mignot fires it towards goal, saved by Jonty Purdom. Ryan Clark. Let's get the better of Krista Dulu. It's a good battle going on between these two. Krista Dulu isn't going to give up without a fight. Back to Testa Miriam. Ball in towards the penalty area. And then a shot it was blocked. It was Fitzgerald. Blocked by Warren.
It's into the penalty area. On the turn. That's a crisp finish by Jordan Palmer Samuels. A bit of quality. And finally, the breakthrough. Midway through the second half. It's a long throw. The glancing header only partially cleared. It's a tremendous turn. And he manages to rifle home left-footed before the challenge comes in. And Jordan Palmer Samuels makes it five goals in the Roger Jones Challenge Cup for this season. And the advantage in the semi-final goes to Highgate Albion seconds. They hit the post in the first half. Enfield United. They don't want a second successive weekend of heartache in the semi-finals. He's heading that way unless they could change things. Long throw from Jeffrey. Flicked on by the defender. It's flicked away well. Kept it alive, did Mignot. Back into the penalty area, but that floats aimlessly behind for a goal kick, and that will suit Highgate Albion. Long throw. Into that penalty area, which is too high for Chris to do loop. Turned forward by Sidel. Chance to rifle one at goal, but it was wide from Montella. This is over everybody, including Santay. Now to go on the outside as the goal scorer, Palmer Samuels, does well to hold it up, gives it to Tester Merriam. Palmer Samuels again. Paul Reed, the referee's whistle has gone, and a free kick to Enfield United. word for the goal scorer a yellow card for the goal scorer Jordan Palmer Samuels what can Enfield United conjure up coming forward from the back with Ward Fitzgerald ball out wide Simon Testamarium up against Christodoulou, cuts back inside to the left foot, in towards the back post. This is Palmer Samuels trying his luck, but got no sort of power at all on the shot. Jeffrey plays it square, Connolly. It's Connolly again in the midfield. Chance for him to play it forward. Just Steps it forward, but cleared away by Highgate Albion. Anywhere will do. Krista Dulu goes to clear. Doesn't make a good connection. And the job of Tester Merriam is just to keep the ball up that end, but he might well have a clean run at goal here. Good slight challenge in there, which was enough to slow things down. Wide from Glord. Fitzgerald. That's a foul, is it? Surely. No, says the referee. Clear it away. And the referee wants a word for that challenge. And a yellow card for Shane McNamara. Time beginning to run out here for Enfield United. Trailing by a goal to nil. Forward by Assis. Long throw and towards that six yard box. Good, strong header away. Drops for Assis. Tees it up for Sudell. Twisting to the left and playing it to the left. Assis, his attempt on goal deflected. Goalkeeper can't prevent it. Jonty Purdom for going out for a corner. Sudell will take this corner on the left hand side. We need a goal. It's a very good. Header away. This is shot charged down, and suddenly it's a breakaway for Highgate Albion. It's good running from Peters. Need support. Wasn't forthcoming. We got numbers back. Enfield United won it back and then lost it. Claude, long ball over the top will just. Roll away and Peters out to nothing. And Nathan Lewis will try and shift this ball downfield as quickly as he possibly can with a drop kick. 
And there is the final whistle. And it's Highgate Albion seconds that have won through to the final of the Roger Jones Senior Challenge Cup. They have beaten Enfield United in a very tight semi-final by one goal to nil. Dan, big game. Did you expect it to go like that? Yeah, I did. I knew they was the fit of the younger team. But they've improved so much over, over the last couple of years. As we meet them in the leagues, they've improved so much. First half, they battered the, they battered the life out of us. They popped us all around the pitch and the engines were starting to go. Um, so I expected that sort of game, but yeah. You're through to the final. How's it feel? God, mate, another final with this team, mate. We, I think a lot of us have been here for like five to six years now. And every year we get into a final. So it's, 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 it's nothing new, but I know we're in a higher divisions now. So the opposition is going to be better. It was a, a tough game, well taken goal from Jordan. Tell me what's going through your head as that ball fell to him. <laughs> I thought, I thought it's going, I, I generally thought it's going over as he was turning on a half turn, but he does that, he does that week in, week out for us. So a, 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 little, a little hope, a little hope, and it goes in the back of the net and then you just got to hold on after that. A few nervous moments, a, a few good chances for Enfield United. How confident were you that you'll be able to close the game out? Once they started pushing on, I knew, I knew we'd, I knew we'd um, hold on because they started going into our game, long balls, long throws, that we are better them in the air. That's what we had, that's what we had over them today, is aerial threat and grit. And we had that. And once they started playing our game, I knew, I knew it was, it was, it was sort of going like that. But obviously they can get a chance and it can fall to them. But yeah, I, I was hopeful. Once they started playing our game, I was hopeful that we, we could see it out. Well, you're through to the final. Congratulations. Is this one that you could go all the way in? <laughs> It's, it's, it's going to be a, a 10 to 1 shot in the final if we get there. We got, um, we'll either have Highgate ones, which we played early in the season, done quite well, but obviously they got a lot of players, play higher standard, get paid to play. So, um, so listen, it's a game of football. Anyone can win. Anyone can win. So hopefully we, um, we, can, we can put a good show on for ourselves.